To the glory of your name, Lord, we ask for your guiding presence in our lives. Amen. We often hear or use the expression that God works in mysterious ways. The Bible is replete with stories of ordinary, ill-prepared, or ill-suited and flawed people called by God to do extraordinary deeds. Abraham was a flawed and contradictory person who struggled with his faith. But at the ripe old age of 75, God spoke to Abraham and told him to pull up stakes and settle in the faraway land of Canaan, where he would establish the kingdom of Israel. God also called Moses a shy, humble man, but a man who murdered an Egyptian for beating a fellow Hebrew. God sent an angel who appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of a bush, and God spoke to Moses, calling him to free his people from the bonds of slavery in Egypt and lead them to the promised land. Then there is David, a simple shepherd, but a man who lusted after Uriah's wife and plotted to have Uriah slain so that he could take Bathsheba as his wife. David is chosen by God to establish a powerful dynasty which laid the foundation for the coming of the Messiah. And of course, we have Christ himself, who chose very ordinary fishermen, tax collectors and the like, to leave their livelihood behind and to follow in his footsteps, performing many extraordinary feats. In today's reading from Acts, we encounter Saul, the educated, devout, and righteous Jew, tax collector, and self-proclaimed protector of the Jewish faith, rigid upholder of the laws of Moses, and a zealot. Why would God, through a vision of Jesus amid the blinding light, call upon this man who is breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord? And isn't that an understatement? Saul didn't just breathe threats and murder. As it says in chapter 8, Stephen is stoned to death and Saul approved of their killing him. And as Stephen was being buried, Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging off both men and women and committing them to prison. And as we learn in today's reading, Saul was on his way to Damascus to further persecute the Christians with the full authority of the Jewish leaders. But God works in mysterious ways and obviously saw something extraordinary about Saul. After his encounter with the Lord, Saul, now Paul, would do more than any other mortal to spread the word of Christ's death and resurrection and saving grace. And let's not forget Ananias. It is too easy for the importance and significance of his role to be overshadowed by the calling of Paul. Ananias was a devout Christian in Damascus, but there is nothing written to suggest that he was anything but ordinary, and yet God appeared to him in a vision and commanded him to seek out Saul, to lay his hands on him, and cure his blindness. Despite great trepidation and even fear of his own life, because Ananias knew of Saul's evil deeds, he did as God commanded and made it possible for Paul to go on and perform extraordinary deeds in the name of Christ. So what are we to do with these stories of God's call? In all cases, they are profound and dramatic and extraordinary and full of graphic images. I don't know about you, but in my ordinariness, I feel inadequate. My encounters with God lack the visions the burning bush, or the blinding light. And he has certainly not talked to me audibly like he has to some of these notable biblical figures. But lest you think I'm being heretical, I do believe that God has communicated with me. And I'm in no doubt that God has called me. And for some reason, I either too frequently wander from his call, or his call changes as I change. And so he has to communicate with me more than once. Some of you may have heard me talk about my call, so bear with me. When I was 14, I attended the Salvation Army, and at a rally with another friend, we responded to the call to allow Jesus into our lives. I know that we did this sincerely, but a few years later, I walked away from the church and had nothing to do with it until I was in my 40s and undergoing hospitalization for cancer. 
And there wasn't an Ananias in my life. And I don't think he feared for my reputation. He was a military chaplain assigned to hospital pastoral care who frequently visited me. Despite rebuffing his many invitations to pray for me before my second operation, for some reason that I don't comprehend, that time I did ask for his prayers. And when I had recovered, I, I began attending St. Christopher's with Wendy and was eventually baptized and confirmed. My life had changed for the better in many ways, and yet despite this new sense of spiritual well-being, over the next 20 years or so, I frequently asked God, why had he saved me? What did he want from me? What did he want me to do? My most recent encounter of note with God occurred at the men's casino a few years ago, and as a result, when Linda suggested I consider studying to become a lay reader, I was ready. I took this as a sign from God as to what he wanted of me. Okay, so that's enough about me. And maybe you are asking, so what does it have to do about you? I say everything. It has everything to do with you and me, because to generalize, we are all ordinary and will likely not do extraordinary deeds in the name of Christ. And maybe God has to call us often. But God is not disappointed. He's patient. He does not expect us to lead extraordinary lives and do extraordinary deeds. What then does he want? He wants us to follow in Jesus' footsteps. To love God. To love our neighbors. To work for social justice and the downtrodden and the underprivileged in this life. He wants us to spread the word and to build up the church. And he wants us to remain open and responsive to his personal call to us, each and every one of us. Individually, we may not be capable of achieving extraordinary deeds in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. But together, our modest, ordinary deeds in response to God's call can make an extraordinary difference in our church, in our community, and in the world. I ask that you consider these questions. Where is God at work within your life? Are you blind and need to see the light? Are you on the right path to salvation? Are you willing to accept the challenge of God's call, even though, like Ananias, it may be difficult? And just like Abraham, Moses, David, the disciples, and Paul, God does not expect you to respond to his call alone. You have the power of the Holy Spirit to guide you, and this prayer to help you. O oh God, by the preaching of your Apostle Paul, you have called, caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world. Grant, we pray, that we, having his wonderful calling in remembrance, may show ourselves thankful to you by following his holy teaching. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.